Hey kids, it is so good to see you all. We are continuing to talk about kindness and going the extra mile to show kindness to those in our, uh, that are around us. And it reminds me of a quick story of uh, my family, we like to go uh, hiking. So all the men in my family, once a year, we go on a backpacking trip. And we load up heavy backpacks with all of our food and water and our tents and sleeping bags, all that stuff jam-packed into a backpack. And uh, we we're out, my family was all hiking, and I was so exhausted. I had to, I just got back from camp, so I was tired, I didn't sleep very good. I had to teach Sunday morning, and then I got in my car and I drove out to go backpacking. I put on the backpack, we started hiking, and I was so tired, we were like a mile from the very end. And I was standing there and I was going, <gasps> I was falling asleep while I was walking. But my cousins showed extreme kindness to me. They went ahead, dropped off their stuff at the campsite, and they came back and they grabbed my backpack, my heavy backpack for me, so I could finish uh, the camping trip with them. Man, it was such a great experience, not only just camping, but they got to show kindness. And today we're gonna learn more about how you can show kindness, just like that, to your friends and to your family. So stick around, it's gonna be amazing. kids, guess what time it is? It is time for worship. But I want to remind you guys of three important things that we need to remind ourselves of before we worship. Okay, are you guys ready? I want you to say them after me. Are you ready? Okay, number one is who God is. Your turn. Okay, number two is what he has done for me. Okay, ready? What he has done for me. Okay, good job guys. Now, the last one is what he is going to do. Good job guys. Okay, get to your feet and worship with me. When I wake up, when I wake up, I know that you are with me every step of the way. You're strong enough, you're strong enough to handle any fear that I face. Even things that scare me, cause they seem too big. Even all the hard things that make me wanna quit. You're bigger than it all, and you're in charge of it. And I don't feel so worried when I look to you, Jesus.
Jesus, you have been so faithful. Jesus, you have been so true. I will be forever thankful. Cause I never had a friend like you. Help me to be who you've been to me. To everyone I see. Let us love one another. You with me in the darkest valley You with me on the mountain top I'm thankful that you never leave me And that your love will never stop Help me to be who you've been to me To everyone I see Let us love one another with the love like no other yet That's the way you love us, God In today's story from the Bible, Jesus is telling his disciples how to live their best lives for him and how they should love everyone, no matter what. Jesus wants to us to show kindness to everyone, even if they're not kind to us back. Let's hear more about how we can share kindness to everyone in our Bible story. Oh hey, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about kindness while we take a look at something amazing that Jesus told his followers. I wonder if Jesus ever used the backpack. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about kindness, which is showing others they are valuable by how you treat them. Um, are you sure you're ready for our hike? Uh, working on it. I just, you know, haven't done much hiking. Understandable, but not to worry. What have you packed so far? Just Dwight. Hey, he's my buddy. Yeah, okay. Now it's time for you to see what's really important to pack. Uh. Like this guy? Oh, um, that's Hubert. Nice to meet you, Huey. Hubert. And he was taking a nap. Okay, what do I need to pack for this? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. The most important thing to take on the trail is, drum roll please. Water! It's super important to stay hydrated while you're hiking. Now for number two, rain poncho. Ah, cause you need water in you, but not on you. Good one. Oh, and number three, an extra jacket or sweater. Then you're going to want to take, ooh, first aid supplies. And sunscreen so you don't get burnt. Um, what's next? Ooh, hand sanitizer. <laughs> My little cousin calls this stuff hanitizer. Wet wipes, and of course, a trash bag. Leave no trace. Nobody wants your trash out in the nature. 
Well, except maybe the raccoons. Otherwise known as trash pandas. Okay, I just feel like something's missing. Hey, what about the trail mix? Ah, well done, young grasshopper. We just need, um, raisins, peanuts, and M&Ms. Oh, you're stuck in the valley, my friend. Just wait and see until we look upon the vast vistas of trail mix possibility. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's make it. What's all this? Well, this is the ultimate make your own trail mix bar. Okay, this is awesome. First, you gotta have carbs to fuel your hike. Carbohydrates provide glucose, which your body converts to energy. You can find carbohydrates in dried fruit like raisins, cranberries, banana chips, and even stuff like pretzels or cereal. And you also need healthy fats. Nuts like peanuts and almonds, pumpkin and sunflower seeds, and even coconut chips, if that's your jam. Healthy fats provide energy while helping to make your bones strong and keep your brain healthy. So your mind is sharp and you don't get lost in the woods. What about this stuff? Oh, that's how you jazz up your trail mix. M&Ms, mini marshmallows, or peanut butter cups, chocolate chips, anything you want, really. But now, it's time to mix it up your way. This could take a while. You really went all out. I try. Speaking of going above and beyond, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Matthew. Matthew is one of the four books called the Gospels. These books tell stories from the life of Jesus. Matthew was written down by one of Jesus' followers, a tax collector whose life was turned upside down by his friendship with Jesus. When Jesus was about 30 years old, he began to travel from town to town, teaching and healing. Everywhere Jesus went, big crowds gathered. Many sick people were desperate to be made well, and Jesus healed them. But Jesus also cared about people's hearts and minds. So he showed them what it looks like to love God and love others. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone. I'm Brian. Big crowds showed up wherever Jesus went. So one day he took his followers up to a mountainside where there was plenty of room. And as Jesus sat down and began to teach, more and more people gathered. Blessed are those who are spiritually needy. The kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Change can only happen when we realize that we need help. Jesus went on to offer that help by explaining what it truly looks like to treat others with God's love. And it's not just about following rules. Here's one of the things Jesus said. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Wait, what? Rewind. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. Okay, there's a lot here to unpack from our hiking packs. <clears throat> First of all, this someone is not your parents making you walk an extra mile on a family hike. The someone Jesus meant was a Roman soldier. Forward, march! Now at that time, Roman soldiers were sent to all corners of the empire, including Judea. They marched on foot, carting up to 60 pounds of armor and weapons, plus food, cooking supplies, and even tent materials. That's a crushing amount of weight, especially if you're not trained to carry it. Here's the thing though, by Roman law, soldiers were allowed to choose any random person along the road and force that person to carry their gear for a whole mile. You there. Who? Me? Yes, you. Take my pack on the double. If you were picked, you had to do it. If you refused, you could be severely punished. Okay, okay. I. I got it. You had to go one mile with the soldier. But after that, you were done. No one could make you carry that weight an extra step. Whew. Now because of this, Jesus' followers must have been shocked when he told them to go two miles? Wait, the Romans are enemies and we're supposed to be nice to them? I thought Jesus was supposed to save us from the Romans. Going an extra mile sounds like being weak and giving in, letting the Romans win. But in truth, it was an incredible way for God's people to stand up. See, a Roman soldier could
could take one mile, but a Jewish person could choose to give a second mile. It was an act of power and trust in God. That's a mile. Nah, I got this for another one. Years later, the Apostle Paul wrote, don't let evil overcome you. Overcome evil by doing good. When you do more than is required, even when it's not fair, you show that the other person does not have the power to control you. And you can show God's love to those around you as well. Now let's take one more look at our verse. Suppose someone forces you to go one mile. Go two miles with them. So, keep your eyes open for opportunities to go above and beyond, okay? Because when you choose to be kinder than you have to be, others can see God at work in your life. The end. 60 pounds? I complain about carrying a water bottle and some snacks. I can see how the people who first heard about the extra mile thing were pretty shocked. Yeah, Jesus knew it was gonna be a powerful word picture. He wanted them to remember and keep thinking about it. So what's our part in the story? Well, that word picture is supposed to stick with us too. I mean, you're not gonna be stopped by a Roman soldier and forced to carry his pack for a mile, but you will face situations that feel meh, unfair, and that's where you can stand strong by choosing kindness. Like, if your coach makes everyone run an extra mile for goofing off, but you weren't. You can choose to run laps without grumbling and still treat your coach with respect. Or, if a kid in your class is rude and cuts in line, you can choose to give them a smile instead of yelling or shoving. And maybe even give them a hand later if they need help. It's a great way to show that they can't control you. But that doesn't mean you have to let them bully you either. That's right, you can respond with kindness, but still tell a teacher. And there are other ways you can go above and beyond to be kind. If it's your turn to empty the dishwasher, take out the trash too. Or pack your brother's lunch too when you pack your own. And anytime a parent or teacher asks you to do something, you can choose to do it with a good attitude. That is a tough one. No kidding, <laughs> but you can always ask for God's help to show kindness in tough or frustrating situations. Well. Thanks for going above and beyond to hang out with us. It's my pleasure. Now I gotta get my miles in. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Be kinder than you have to be. Ah, oh, well would you kindly show me your trail mix creation? I'll do you even better. Have some. Ah, oh, thank you. Mm, that's real good. I think I need a translator. Thanks for joining us in the story lab. See you next time. Mm. I'm gonna do more. You want some? I'm good. Mm -hmm. Wow, it can be really hard to show kindness to others, especially when that if that kindness is not shown back to us. The Bible says in Ephesians 4, 31 and 32, get rid of all hard feelings, anger, and rage. Stop all fighting and lying. Don't have anything to do with any kind of hatred. Be kind and tender to one another. Forgive one another. Just as God Because of what Christ I'm my friend Pearl here to help us out. Let's get started. Colossians 3.12. Colossians 3.12. You are God's chosen people. You are God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. You are holy and dearly loved. So put on. So put on. Tender mercy. Tender mercy. And kindness. And kindness. As if they were your clothes. And if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Be gentle. Whoops. And patient. <laughs> Colossians 3, 12. Colossians 3, 12. Let's do it again. Okay. Colossians 3, 12. Colossians 3, 12. You are God's chosen people. 
You were God's chosen people. You are holy and dearly loved. You were holy and dearly loved. So put on. So put on. Tender mercy. Tender mercy. And kindness. And kindness. As if they were your clothes. And if they were your clothes. Don't be proud. Don't be proud. Be gentle and patient. Be gentle and patient. Colossians 3, 12. Colossians 3, 12. Awesome job. Hey guys, I hope you had so much fun sticking around and hanging out with us. I know I had a blast uh, getting to learn about how we can be kind and go the extra mile uh, for those that uh, we need to show kindness to. Now, that can be hard and that can be difficult. And so, to help you out, we have a question for you to go ask your grown up. So it could be a mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, older sibling, it doesn't matter, it just needs to be a grown up. Uh, here's your question. The question is, how can I show kindness even when I don't feel like it? Because sometimes we don't feel like being kind. We're either grumpy or sad, we're just in a bad mood, we didn't have a good day, we don't feel like going the extra mile and being kind. But that's what Jesus asked us to do. And your grown up can help you figure out how you can show kindness even when you don't feel like it. So, uh, as you guys go today, ask your grown up, how can I show kindness even when I don't feel like it? Can't wait to hear what your guys' answers were. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.